What is up, YouTube family? Thank you guys for tuning back into Will Burn Shenanigans, where we always come up to shenanigans. Shenan I can't even say our right. own oh, damn word today. Shenanigans, because there is no lane on this channel. So, we got some good feedback from our video we uploaded earlier, which was The Rock took me back in time. A lot of you guys are like, I didn't even know you had watched that. Yes, it was part of the childhood. But another one came up who was another favorite of mine, which I mentioned in the Rock video, was Undertaker. And it was like, you guys should react to Undertaker. So I'm like, yes. You know what's so funny? Don't come for me. But do you remember when they had like a theory that the Undertaker was the king? Or the king? Was king? He was both people? I don't remember him. Oh, was it that one? Yeah. I remember them saying like he was dead. Like he was from the dead. Like I remember Well, that, that too. But still. As a kid, you couldn't tell me that. Y'all was like, yeah, they for real. He is I don't not... know. That, yeah, I heard. Maybe it was just my family messing with me or my friends or whatever. But yeah, they used to say that Kane was um, Undertaker. They they said he would like switch people. They are brothers. They don't look alike though at all. In real life, they're brothers? Mm -hmm. Oh, that was just in the, the show. Oh, they're real brothers. Undertaker is arguably the greatest. Undertaker is arguably the greatest wrestler in WWE history and the scariest. Very. The demon from Death Valley has terrified fans and other wrestlers for 30 years. But which moments were the scariest? That's what we're gonna find out right there now. There was moments These I didn't get scared. I ain't gonna lie. There were moments when I used to watch that. When he is that him pulling his eyes back or is that context? No, that's him doing that. <gasps> Undertaker AF? moments of all time. I'm racing in trouble too. Number ten, know. the Undertaker I is alive. Stuck. After I Paul Bearer betrayed Undertaker it. and joined mankind, the Phenom decided to kick things up a notch I by him. introducing oh, the buried alive match. Undertaker and mankind you know, both real? tried to Mortis literally Mortis. bury each other, but it was the Paul dead Bearer, man who had his hand raised. Even though he won, Undertaker ended up being the one buried alive thanks to some interference. At first, it seemed like Mankind and Paul Bearer had successfully destroyed The Undertaker, but then... Oh, back in the day. See, that's what I'm saying! I believe and it! And as a kid, what? you're like so oh, into God. it! The best like a classic ever. horror movie monster, Undertaker's arm rose from beneath the ground. The greatest thing ever. Well, not ever. the most terrifying see. moment I think I cried and thought he died. The visual of a creepy looking arm rising from the ground is pretty spooky. It and is. proves you can't kill the dead man. You sure cannot. Number nine. Couldn't tell me Undertaker nothing. rises from the dead. At the 1994 sandbox, Royal Rumble, Undertaker faced off against Yokozuna and another one of the Phenom's signature match types, the casket match. The dead man put up a good fight, and ultimately took a small army to stuff Taker inside the casket. Even in defeat though, Undertaker would still have the last laugh. As the casket was being carted away, smoke That's began to appear, the jacuzzi. lights went black, and then we saw a look inside the coffin. He always looks scary! After giving I used to love when you hear that little bell, like when they thing. just, doom, like, oh, he back! No, yes. no, imagine like when it turns all black in the stadium. Oh, Heck yeah. no, I, I don't even like the Undertaker dark. Undertaker began ascending inside a cloud of smoke. This moment has a lot of smaller like creepy moments, but to me, the scariest of them all is when Undertaker jolts back to life. The lighting, the angle it's filmed at, and the Undertaker's terrifying time. voice from inside the casket all make it an iconic scary WWE moment. The coffin exploding at the end is a bit much, but it still doesn't stop this from being one of the Undertaker's scariest moments of all time. Number eight, buckle up, Teddy. Oh, I know what you're that? probably thinking. This moment isn't scary. It's funny. Well, yeah, but let me explain. I remember this. At one. the 2009 Breaking Point pay per view, SmackDown general manager Teddy Long screwed the Undertaker That's from winning Teddy. the World Heavyweight Championship by banning the Hell's Gate submission hold and restarting the match. Of so course, me, this made Teddy Long a target for The Undertaker, so SmackDown's GM tried to make up for it by apologizing to the dead man. And I especially would like to apologize to The Undertaker. Nah, no, you didn't. You didn't mean it. Apparently, it wasn't good enough, because after Long got into his limo, he was in for a surprise. Oh my god. Buckle up, Teddy. Oh my, so dramatic! Part of what makes me is that Teddy Long wouldn't be seen until the next SmackDown, meaning that The Undertaker had him kidnapped for a whole week. 
When Teddy did show back up, he was tied up and inside a casket. Oh. We can see that Teddy Long's suit is torn up, so now, Undertaker hey, likely you tortured knew Teddy <laughs> while holding him you hostage. You knew better messing with this to man. To me, that's what makes this moment so scary. But in real life, never shown or explained like, yeah, what exactly yeah. Undertaker did to Teddy Long. Judging by his expression after being freed, whatever Undertaker did to Long must have been pretty messed up. Number I mean, seven, Undertaker garbage. sends Edge to hell. In the main event of SummerSlam 2008, Undertaker and Edge competed in one insane Hell in a Cell match. It was a grueling battle, but Undertaker came out on top. Even after getting the win, the Phenom hadn't had enough and continued attacking Edge. I don't remember this after match. setting up some ladders, I Taker lifted the Radar Superstar up and sent him plummeting down. I do. All the bizarre visuals that appeared before the choke slam were pretty creepy. But since that wasn't enough, this also happened. Whoa, oh my god! Oh my guy on fire! It wasn't just a little fire either. The flames nearly touched the top of the cell. I think this is supposed to be Undertaker metaphorically sending Edge to hell, and it definitely gave that effect. He definitely Edge also won't return till about three months afterward, so his absence helped make this moment even more impactful. The blue lighting, along with the orange flames, also gave the segment a chilling and terrifying feel all at the same time. Imagine being there. Number six, Undertaker locks Ultimate Warrior in a casket. What is with these caskets? Coming off his first WrestleMania victory, Undertaker Death. began feuding with one of the company's biggest stars, Ultimate Warrior. Hair. That's early. The rivalry early. began when Warrior was a guest on Paul Bearer's funeral parlor segment. It turned out to be a trap, and Undertaker jumped the face paint wrestler and eventually stuffed him inside a specially made casket. Rather than cutting days. away or moving on, That's the early, camera stayed on the casket, Very and soon early. ringside personnel ran to the coffin and tried to get it open. After minutes of literally chipping away at it, they finally unlocked the lid. Inside, the ultimate warrior laid lifeless as referees began giving him CPR to try and revive the man. He eventually started breathing, but this segment was played pretty seriously. The crew frantically trying to get the warrior out and him being unconscious when they did finally get the casket opened. Something else that adds the scariness what? is that the ultimate warrior was trying to escape by tearing at the top of the casket before passing out. This was also when WWE was still in a cartoony phase, which made this moment That's more shocking. Crazy. That's scary. Number five, it made it real. Undertaker it tries made to real. Steve Austin. After suffering a concussion at the hands of The Undertaker, Steve Austin was spending the night at a hospital, or should I say, a local medical facility. While he was recovering, Stone Cold uh, 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 out, the dead man and his manager took Austin's lifeless body to a funeral home God. to embalm him alive. This they got Austin so on the operating dramatic. table, cut this. open his shirt, and prepared to slice him open. Anything involving cutting someone this. open, especially when they're still alive, is just disgusting and freaks me out. The cold emptiness of the room like, like, also that's what I'm saying. Days, like, watch this as Back a kid then, was real. Why, how do you not, how can we not think this is real? Look how real it looks. They sold the hell out of it. It's still almost, you look at it, they Of course, Stone Cold doesn't actually end up getting cut open. That came? But even though I knew that, I still had a tough time watching this entire exactly. segment. Exactly. You might disagree, but I still find Undertaker's involvement operation to be one of the scariest things he's ever done. Number four, Undertaker nearly kills Paul Bearer. In 2004, Paul Bearer returned to manage The Undertaker. During their renewed alliance, Bearer was kidnapped by Paul Heyman and the Dudley Boys. Dudley Boys. At the Great American I Bash, get the Heyman trapped Undertaker's manager inside a tank and threatened to fill it with cement if the Phenom didn't lay down for Bubba Ray and Devon. Not only did Undertaker defeat both of the Dudleys, but he also prevented Heyman from killing Paul Bearer. It seemed like the story was going to have a happy ending, until... I have no other choice. No, no, no! Undertaker! No! What are you doing? What the hell is he doing? Look at this. This it, it scarred me. This type of stuff scarred me. Yep. Undertaker decided to murder his manager. Killing someone is already pretty dark, but it's even Very darker dark. considering how long of a history Bearer and Undertaker had. Now, they did mention on the following episode of SmackDown that Paul Bearer survived and only suffered severe what internal injuries. Right there. Okay, so Undertaker didn't successfully kill someone, he but that doesn't did. change the fact that Undertaker fully intended to suffocate his manager. 
One of the reasons this isn't higher in the top 10 is because of the technical limitations. WWE couldn't have the real Paul Bearer in the tank during the show, so they had to use a stunt double and work around it, which does ruin the moment a bit. Even with that though, death by suffocation is a scary thing, especially when you're willing to do it to someone you're close to. Number three, Undertaker throws Mankind off Hell in a Cell. I remember Mankind. Undertaker and Mankind did a fair share of scary stuff together, but then again, they both look like this, so what did you expect? I didn't like At the 1998 scary. King of the Ring, the two matches faced off I mean, in only the third Hell in a Cell match in history, and things got intense very quick. The match started on top of the cage, and after just a bit of brawling, Undertaker threw his opponent off the 16-foot structure to the floor below. Yeah. While spots like this oh, aren't that uncommon great. today, at the time, this was something fans never really saw. What also makes Mankind's fall from the cell scary is not knowing if he's actually okay or not. Is Mankind lifeless because he's selling the fall? Or did we just legitimately see someone's career come to an end? It's so it shocking They was really out here real, living savage life scarier. back then. It see, probably, now you can't even really say like, how to, I, they was really doing some stuff. You can get hurt, so touch Hey, you not. I'd have been like, I'm taking you. Throw me off the top of the damn thing. Also you feels real because you feels can't really fake this. Damn it. back, bro. Now, we know that Mankind continued with the match and would also wrestle for several more years, Look which is great, but it does take Make, the edge oh, yeah, off a bit. Plus, this clip of Mankind falling has been shown so much that it loses a bit of its mystique. Both of those reasons are why this moment isn't ranked higher, but even with all that, it's still a terrifying incident that it could is. have easily been much worse it could have the slightest thing gone wrong. You gotta do what you gotta do. Number two, Undertaker take take possesses take Josh Matthews. Possesses? December 9th, 2005. The night The Undertaker kept scaring the crap out I of Randy Orton. Like Throughout the entire show, the Phenom kept playing all kinds of mind games on Orton. While they're all spooky, the last one was definitely the scariest. Orton and his dad had enough of Undertaker's supernatural tricks and were leaving the arena. The only problem? The doors to their car were locked, and then the car drove away on its own. The scariest part, though, was when backstage interviewer Josh Matthews appeared, and then... And <gasps> Enjoying the ride, Randy. What? I don't remember Holy this crap. at all. It's disturbing hearing the Undertaker's He sold the heck out of that. That's crazy. Josh Matthews like that. The way Matthew's eyes change when he's possessed just makes it even now creepier. That the unnatural sounds that play stuff. and abruptly end before and after Undertaker possesses Josh Matthews also add to the scare factor. This could have flopped hard, but instead became known as one of the Undertaker's scariest moments. And number one, was number one, Undertaker sacrifices Dennis Knight. Mm -hmm. It's not too surprising that the Undertaker's scariest moment happened during his Ministry of Darkness phase. Part of the reason for that is because it happened during the Attitude Era, when WWE wasn't afraid to push everything as far as it could go. Yes. The scariest it. moment from this period of the Undertaker, though, yeah, has been when the Phenom sacrificed one of his followers, Peacock, Dennis Knight. After bringing out his ministry, Undertaker filled a cup with his own blood and gave it to Knight to drink. I remember well, seeing this! Disgusting! On top of that, Undertaker also carved a symbol into his follower's chest. And if all that wasn't creepy enough, the dead man also lit his iconic cross on fire. As I previously mentioned, anything involving cutting parts of the body really freaks me out. So this was a pretty intense segment to watch. Unlike some other moments we talked about like where practicality limited no. what they could do, this moment showed everything up close. And on top of that, they went through with all of it. No came to save the day this time. What do you think is the scariest That was sick! I'm, Undertaker was just scary in general. Um, Alright, look. So y'all went to the comment section yesterday and was like, hey, go binge watch it. One of you said you went on Peacock and went back in 1997 and started watching. I'm like, I'm about to do that! I'm about to do it because I missed this. It, I don't it, remember Undertaker ever looking like that. Yeah, he was doing his thing. And then it's crazy because, like, remember I, I was goofing around at the end of the video and I was like, it makes you emotional. It really does because when you watch, rewatch stuff like that, you picture, like, I always go back to, like, where I was at as a child watching this stuff and, like, being a child watching it and so entertained. Like, we were just really. I remember always having to do it on the couches and you get in trouble because your couches are messed up. The like, pillows and everything. And then you see all of them now just getting older. Like, Even The Rock getting up there. <laughs> Undertaker just got in the Hall of Fame. I seen, I watched that actually with my son. When he got in, uh, they put him in the Hall of Fame. And then it's just like crazy. Like when you see him like just growing X-Pac, like all of them was there. Like all the wrestlers that we came up with is just like. This is 
is this a sign to get our son the ring and the figure? It is a sign. It is, is a, it sign. a sign. Let us know in the comments. Should we get him the rings and the figure, the figurines? All right, y'all. I'm starting tonight. Episode one, season I one. I wonder how many is there. It's a bunch. I went on there. It's on Peacock. Oh, wow. I didn't even know it went back that far until I went. I was like, oh, And we dang. thought it started when we watched it. Season one, episode one is going down, y'all. No, I'm going to start where I came up. I'm going to start right there, and I'm going to go with it. I'm going to let y'all know how my journey is watching it again. Don't cry. I might get emotional. But anyways, as always, thank y'all for tuning in with us as always. Let us know what y'all want us to react to next down below. See y'all in the next one.